What's up guys? So today I'm going to make a video about how I quit smoking, why I started smoking, and also um, how I became a cheerleader. And yeah, I'm making this video today in the RV because Dan just got the Oculus Quest 2 headset and he's playing VR so I figured I'd change my scenery and uh, make a video out here for one. So I started smoking when I was about 17 because my boyfriend at the time smoked and I wanted him to stop smoking because it wasn't very nice and he didn't want to, so as kind of a I'll show you how it feels thing, um, I started smoking, which obviously didn't bode too well for me, and he didn't really care because he already smoked, but in my head I thought maybe he would care enough to realise that it's a bad thing for, me to, for him to do and for me to do. Um, so I started smoking, and then we broke up, um, like I think six months later, and then I was still stuck with the habit of smoking, which I wasn't able to get out of until I was about 20 years old, 20, 21. And the reason why I quit smoking is a bit of a story in itself. Um, when I was 20, I moved to Australia to see my mum because she had moved over there for like five years. I wanted to go over and visit. I moved to Australia. Um, it was like two weeks before my 21st birthday and I got there, landed and yeah, like that was kind of my life. And then... Um, about six months after living there, I was working in a hairdressing salon and this kid came in who was about 15 and I ended up cutting his hair and while I was cutting his hair this big thing happened outside the salon and I was like, what's going on? He goes, oh, my mum owns a cheer gym. And I was like, oh really? Like, I always wanted to do gymnastics or something like that, but um, I never got into it. And he was like, oh, you should come along, come along on like a Friday night and um, like meet some people, see how you go, see if you enjoy it and stuff like that. And he was like super friendly and like keen for me to go and give it a go. So I did. Um, I managed to pluck up the courage because I was super like insecure back then and was unable to do anything like that, especially in a group situation of things that I knew nothing about. And I plucked up the courage and I went. And I was like smoking all the way there because of stress, etc, etc. And I got there and I met everybody that was in the cheer gym at the time. And I loved it. Like I fell in love with this sport because it was gymnastics, which is something that I'd always wanted to do. And it was just like, you know, a team environment, but people seemed positive And yeah, it just looked like an amazing thing to be a part of. And when I walked outside of that gym, that session, which was about an hour and a half long, I said, I'm never going to smoke again. I took my pack of cigarettes and I threw them in the trash and I quit cold turkey. Um, bear in mind, prior to that, I was smoking about 20 to 30 cigarettes a day, which is a lot. And to be able to quit cold turkey was pretty crazy. But I kind of want everyone to know that if you've got the willpower to quit, then, then you can quit pretty easy. You just have to be positive that it's 100% sure of what you want to do is is to quit and it does help to have a goal in mind like I wanted to become an athlete and I wanted to work really hard with my body to train it to be in the best sort of performance levels that I could be in for cheer even though I had only been to one session I kind of knew that that is my new obsession my new addiction um, so I can kick this old one in the butt and yeah, so I managed to quit smoking there and then. Um, I will be honest and admit that I had a couple of times where I did have an extra cigarette here and there, but as far as it went, I pretty much quit. Um, and that's like one of the main things that I wanted to communicate in this video is that if you've got the willpower for something, be it smoking or, you know, anything else, if you want to quit smoking or you want to start something like cheerleading or gymnastics or you know all these crazy things that you can do with your life the willpower part of it like it will help you get there and you'll like kill it like you can kick that habit and you can start a sport or do something super creative and fun with yourself and you can just do it like just believe in yourself and you will be able to do it so I started cheerleading and um, I went back the following Friday and I managed to go I think for probably about four months before my visa expired and I had to go back to the UK. Um, in those four months I had learned so much, like I had learned so much in terms of gymnastics and in cheerleading and stunting and like the basic foundation of what I managed to understand that cheerleading was. And then I moved back to the UK. Um, 
When I moved back to the UK, I was really depressed and I like really struggled with that. Um, maybe I'll make a video about that because it is a big story in itself. Um, but I did end up trying out for a cheer team. Cheerleading wasn't as big in the UK as it was in Australia at the time, but I managed to find a gym that was near me. Um, so I went to tryouts and my first initial tryout, oh my gosh, it was so embarrassing. Um, and if anybody that I cheered with watches this, which maybe they will, um, they will have a laugh at this. Because when I was trying out, I was showing what skills I could do and we were working our way up and stuff. And then in cheer there was like, uh, like we'd do like a round off and a like toe touch out of it. Like, you know, where you like split your legs in the air sort of thing. And I was like, oh, I can do this, you know, like, I was kind of still super new to all this stuff and I thought it was cool that I could do it and all this stuff, so I, like, managed to do it. And as I was, like, going up out of my round off, um, my pants came down with the gravity. Um, and I ended up basically in the middle of the air with my pants down around my ankles and my underwear out in front of a whole squad of girls and the, like, trainers and everything like that. I don't think there was any other guys there either. Which was absolutely demoralizing, um, but I still went back the next time for an actual class and got over all of that stuff. And yeah, it was, ended up being a, like a great team and everyone on it was super amazing. But that was my first hand experience in the UK of cheer. Um, that being said, after I'd been cheering for a little bit of time there, I ended up trying out for another team as well. So I ended up on two teams in the UK, um, and as if that wasn't enough for me, I decided to try out for a third team. So I think in in the end, for about a year, my training schedule, I trained 38 hours a week, which is a lot. Um, some of those weeks, it would be based over a Saturday and Sunday with a certain team, so I'd go and train for maybe 12 to 14 hours on like a Saturday and a Sunday with them, and then the rest of the time with, was, was with other teams. And cheerleading became my life. Like, I can't even begin to tell you how much of my life became, like, orientated around cheer. Like, I ended up, like, you know, progressing okay with my skills, especially for my age, being 21 and not having gymnastic backgrounds. Like, I could do a front flip and that was about it. Um, I actually progressed, like, pretty well. Um, and I was quite able to do these things, which was awesome. But when you get a bit older, you get, like, a bit more scared of things. So it was harder for me to learn and overcome the fears. But I did manage to, to get over them and get ahead of that. And I actually ended up um, doing courses to be able to be a cheer instructor and gymnast instructor. So I ended up being able to coach level one and two um, cheer teams, which was super cool and like, yeah, I really managed to enjoy everything about the sport. Um, competitions were like amazing and crazy, like, I can't even begin to express what a cheerleading competition is if you're a cheerleader. Um, if you're a parent going to see your kid and stuff like that, you don't really understand the amount of work it takes to personally go through all of that stuff as much as you can be there to see and support it um, to actually live that experience for them two and a half minutes on a mat like it's absolutely insane like you exhaust yourself with that it's crazy um, and then yeah like I, I continued cheering for a few years after that um, and it was my life um, I never really sustained too many crazy inju injuries in it. I sprained both my ankles at the same time and I think that was pretty much the worst thing I'd done. Um, that wasn't too fun. I couldn't walk for like four days afterwards um, and that's because I landed wrong out of like doing tumbling like gymnastic stuff. But all in all like it was an amazing sport and um, I got to an age where my body wasn't coping with it too well. I got to an age where my body wasn't coping too well with it. Um, like I have problems with my shoulders from hairdressing and that anyway. So when I'm like chucking girls up in the air and holding them up and you know, I'm like doing pyramids, which is like two p more people on top of me and just crazy stuff. Like, yeah, it definitely took a toll on my body and um, I definitely couldn't do it all now. Um, but yeah, I totally think, like, put yourself out there and go and do something crazy. It doesn't matter how old you are. Um, I've been noticing a lot of people that I, like, watch on YouTube or follow on Instagram and stuff like that. It's kind of a 
find find something that you're really uncomfortable with and do it um and that could be anything uh like making a youtube channel um like trying out for a soccer team or you know doing anything that you think i would like to try that but i'm uncomfortable about doing that or i don't know how i feel about it i would just say go and do it because i did that at 21 and it became my life and most kids start that when they're a lot younger so yeah really just just put yourself out of your comfort zone and trust me you're gonna you're gonna love it and enjoy it and if it's not the right thing for you you'll know that once you've given it a go but don't don't sacrifice giving it a go because of your unsure of whether you're going to enjoy it or insecure and stuff like that um so yeah i have again pushed myself out of my comfort zone many times and at the moment my biggest one is um youtube so I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone by making these videos, especially when I'm out in public and things like that, because everybody knows that when somebody's making a YouTube video or something like that, like, it looks a bit funny when you're walking around with a camera in front of you and stuff like that. So it is a ma that is a major insecurity of mine to walk around with a camera. Um, I, I also get quite insecure taking a photo out and about and stuff like that. So this is definitely my next thing that is like taking over my life because I love it but at the same time it's a major out of my comfort zone like insecure moment to be able to do these things but I'm slowly overcoming it and I'm so thankful that I've got Dan to be able to help me out with that stuff as well um, and push me out of my comfort zone um, because it is something that I've been wanting to do for so long uh, so yeah don't delay go and do what you want to do something crazy this weekend Find something that you're uncomfortable doing and just go and do it and yeah just push yourself to do it because um, you're gonna feel amazing afterwards like we all do like trust me on that one um, so yeah unfortunately I don't cheer anymore um, but positively I don't smoke anymore so I hope you found like a little bit of inspiration in this um, this video um, like to give up an addiction that you've got or to go and find something to get addicted to that's really good for you um, I really hope that's something that you get out of this. And again, leave in comments below, like have a chat with me and tell me a bit about yourself and stuff like that because I do love to get to know everyone. And don't forget to hit like and subscribe, turn that bell for notifications wherever it is along here somewhere. And yeah, I look forward to telling you all my next story, which I'm not sure what it's gonna be yet. If you have any ideas, send me a message or drop me an email and stuff like that because I know not everyone wants to comment publicly um, so I'm, I'm just as eager to get your emails as I am on the comment section so yeah I just love love getting to know everybody so yeah if you want to know anything about me don't hesitate to ask and I will let you know and I hope you have a great evening take it easy and go and seek something that pushes you out your comfort zone it's my like final message